I don't know where to start. I mentioned in some comments on my other videos that I was working on a other big project. The project was the design and build of VR5 model engine with a displacement of 49 cubic centimeters. As you have seen at the beginning of the video, the engine is finished and runs. I would like to show you a few photos and impressions. This is the lower engine block and also the oil pan. It guides the four support bearings. It has been anodized black and then refinished. The rear has been sanded for decoration. Here you can see the centerpiece, the engine block without cylinder liners. The cylinder angle is 15 degrees and the cylinder head is mounted flat. We therefore have a wedge-shaped combustion chamber. The engine block was also anodized black and then finished together with the lower engine block. The bearing points for the four support bearings are also clearly visible here. As mentioned, the cylinder head is flat. It has two valves per cylinder with one glow plug. The valves have a diameter of 11 millimeters and close directly into the aluminum. I'll say something about the valve train later. This is what the engine block looks like when assembled. I use gold-plated 12.9 screws as a design point. It just looks better. At this point, I would like to say that these crazy milled parts were made by my buddy RC Engine 71. He also builds model engines in his spare time. Check out his channel. He builds mighty V8s with superchargers, boxer six cylinders, or even inline four cylinders. Link to his channel in the description. The blank for the connecting rod is 3D printed from grade five titanium. This is easier than milling the blank from solid material. I then CNC milled it and trimmed it for lightweight construction. The connecting rod bearings for crank pin and piston pin are made of bronze. This results in a very good plane bearing together with the hardened and ground steel of the pins. The bearings are then pressed into the connecting rods. The bearings protrude 0.2 millimeters from the connecting rod so that the titanium connecting rods cannot rub against each other. There is one oil hole per bearing and the bearings have been honed. Here you can see the finished piston with connecting rod. The piston has one piston ring made of cast iron. The piston itself is made of an aluminum high silicon alloy and has 7.5 degrees cranked clearances for the two valves. The piston pin is made of hardened and ground steel and has two bronze plugs as limiters. Isn't it simply fascinating to look at it? In the yellow box, you can see the finished cast iron piston rings. Below, you can see the three self-made holders for milling the ring opening, for turning the outside in the clamp state, and for turning the inside, also in the clamp state. Here you can see one of my piston rings in the cylinder of the engine. You can see very nice the rectangular ring gap of 0.1 millimeters. You can see as well that the piston ring lay clean and circular against the cylinder wall. Otherwise, you would see a light gap somewhere around the piston ring. I'm very happy with the final quality of my piston rings. The crankshaft isn't made from one piece. It's made up of different segments and bolted together. This has the advantage that the connecting rod doesn't have to be built out of two parts. A ball bearing is installed in each segment. There are a total of four support bearings and two in each flange. The crank pins are made of hardened and ground steel. And this is what the movement of the pistons in the VR5 engine looks like. It just looks fascinating. A few words about the cylinder liner. This is made from CK45, night rided, ground and honed. It was then pressed into the engine block and milled over when pressed in. Next, I'll show you the valve train. Here you can see the two 11 millimeter valves on the 25 millimeter piston. As I said, the valves are exactly vertical and the piston is at an angle of 7.5 degrees. Here you can also see very well the typical wedge-shaped combustion chamber of a VR engine. The cylinder head is flat and the valves close flush directly in the aluminum. To the left of the valves, you will find the five thread for the glow plugs. A bronze valve guide is pressed into the cylinder head. 
The valve itself has a valve plate with retaining ring and a valve spring. This is what the cylinder head looks like mounted on the motor block. The next step is to mount the camshaft housing to the cylinder head. Here you can see that the camshaft is supported with ball bearings and that the camshaft isn't made from one piece. The cams are screwed on later. The camshaft housing is anodized red. Bronze guides for the bucket tappets are pressed into the camshaft housing. These guide and hold them in position. These are the bucket tappets. I made them from steel, hardened, and ground them. These are hollow and also ground on the inside. This is important because the thickness of the base must be very precise so that the valve clearance is correct later on. Now we can mount the camshaft housing. Then we insert the bucket tappets into the bronze guides. Now let's screw in a cam and see if the whole thing works smoothly. Isn't that just fantastic? Just to see how smoothly it works. This is what it looks like when all the cup tappets are fitted. Here then with the mounted camshaft with the bolted on cams. Each cam is fixed with three screws, a common and proven method for a model engine. The timing belt drive is also somewhat special because the pinions on the two camshafts are so close together. I had to build the drive it in two parts. The first timing belt makes the reduction ratio one to two, and the second timing belt is only there for distribution to the two camshafts. It surprised me, but it looks really good. That's pretty much it. I also made a simple intake manifold with a carburetor and a dummy ignition distributor for the glow plugs. Just something else. This is an integrated flywheel. This has additional functions that are not relevant for starting the engine now. I will make a separate video about this and then reveal its secrets. Now I stop talking and we start the VR5 engine. As some of you will have noticed from the photos, all the parts were made for two engines. Here you can see the two finished engines. On the right is mine, and on the left is the one from RC Engine 71. Take a look at his video of the VR5 as well. Link in the description. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to like the video and subscribe.